What's going on, everybody? So today I have a fun one for you. We're going to be talking about set items and the best places, the fastest places to potentially farm them. Now, this is for two reasons. One, we have the update coming up in a couple days here. As of recording this video, it's like 2 a.m. on 12 12. Uh, so it'll this video will come out a few hours here. And we have probably the patch notes dropping tomorrow. And I would like to go ahead and get my set items because I currently don't really have a full set for my Demon Hunter because when I swapped over, um, from an intelligence to strength class, I basically never went back and farmed my set items. You guys watch my Barbarian video. I farmed like 800 dungeons and I still didn't get a full set and I was mad, so I decided not to do it again. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm gonna be farming dungeons soon to prepare for the update. But not only that, some people just care about the wisps because if you get the wisps and you can basically save them up, save them up, save them up, you'll be able to craft them up five to one to that hell six wisps whenever that comes. So a lot of people are wondering what is just the fastest way to get set items. And that really has to do with the dungeon you're farming. Of course, if it's boosted or not, that also plays a role. But I also have some tools to help you that I developed myself and I'll share that in this video. Let's get into it. So jumping right into it, I have a spreadsheet here. I've been uh, making this spreadsheet for months and months and months since the game launched. I have a ton of calculations and, and spreadsheet work on here, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about a specific tool that I personally use, and uh, I will link this spreadsheet in the description down below, and then I'll guide you over to it. If you guys want to use it for yourself, you're just gonna have to go up to here at file, make a copy, uh, and then you can adjust it, check mark it, whatever you wanna do. But you'll click on the tabs in the bottom, of the screen and you'll notice a bunch of tabs down here you're going to go to the set item tracker now this is where you're going to end up because we're talking about set items here and dungeons and i use this all the time now uh, just to give you a brief rundown of how it works i just have um, something that i like to track because i want to get every set in the game when i want to test it so let's say i have a vithus piece um, it'll go down here and check mark okay i have this vithus piece neck right um or if i have a gloom guides piece from uh whatever i'll put a check here and uh got it this allows you to basically um not have to like go into the game check the menu check this glove you can just put it up on the side of your or on the right hand side or another screen or whatever and you'll have it up i like it and uh, you're all free to use it so that's the first thing but the second thing is the actual strategy for farming set items. Now, this has changed since the previous update. As you can see, it's been updated with the Silent Monastery. We did this about two months ago. Um, but you'll notice that each dungeon has its own set item, main set item. What I mean by that is it's both rings are in that set uh, or in that dungeon. That's super important to know because you're going to want to prioritize that for whatever class or whatever set whatever class you want most classes are going to be running a four piece and a two piece i would say the majority of them will be um most classes might do a vithu's two piece combo or a uh you know vithu's mount bank combo or a four piece grace plus two piece or you know something like that vithu's four piece is a very common uh used set and so that is arguably one of the most important but regardless of whatever class you're playing or whatever set you're playing let's say you wanted to go for windloft you're going to want to start with a dungeon that has both windloft pieces in it okay mad king's breach this is what i'll do every single time for me i want a four-piece vithus and i want a two-piece shell boss okay so i'm going to be heading to destructions end for a four-piece vithus um this is going to just help me with basic open world farming and so i would like the vithus pieces that means starting off with destruction end and then as soon as I get both pieces or even a single piece, I might swap it up. Now for me, I need the two piece shell boss. And with the recent changes, they made it more difficult for us demon hunters because Vithus and shell boss do not overlap at all, which means I'm going to farm my Vithus pieces and then head over to head of anguish to pick up my shell boss pieces. Okay. This is incredibly, incredibly important because Obviously, this is going to give you twice the amount of drop rate that you possibly could get in another dungeon, right? We have a potential six different drops, um, so it's a one out of six chance. Otherwise, it's a two out of six chance if you go to the one with the primary sets, okay? Definitely want to prioritize that. So I'm going to be heading to Destruction of the first to pick up my two Vithus, and then Pit of Anguish after that, potentially. Because remember, I can't wear rings on both sets. I have to pick one which makes it a little bit more tricky. So 
this is where it gets a little bit more tricky because I'll have to prioritize the gloves, the boots, the neck, the waist. And so what's going to happen is whatever dungeon is boosted first, you're going to want to run that. Okay. And then if you happen to have not gotten the two rings, then you can farm the rings because I can't dupe up rings, right? I can't run two Vithu's rings and two Shaw Boss rings. They are, the slots are already filled. So I'm gonna have to run over to uh, Matt King's Breach and go over and pick up their gloves or uh, Tomb of Fahir and pick up the boots there. It's really unfortunate that I can't double up on Vithu's and great, uh, Shaw Boss pieces. However, there are some you know classes that can do that. For example, if I was playing a wizard, I actually very much like the four-piece gray set with a two-piece Vithu's or even a four-piece Vithu's with a two-piece grace for a lot of different content. Okay, so Temple of Namari, would be amazing because I can get two Grace pieces and a Vithu's piece. And then, guess what? I can head over to, um, I don't know, something like Pit of Anguish and potentially get Grace gloves and Vithu's boots if I hadn't picked up the Vithu's gloves. You know, there's definitely situations where you can double up, and this kind of lets you know what you can go for. Uh, now, obviously, you can look at this in game, but it is a little bit more tricky. Um, it's not as clean. And then, of course, um, you know, you mark it and it looks all pretty. So helpful, you guys take the use out of that. So that's part one of, you know, set item farming and strategy and all that. You're going to want to prioritize, obviously, the dungeons that have the most pieces first and then move on, assuming that those are boosted dungeons, okay? If you plan on farming this in, a, in a, like a couple of days, you don't need to worry about boosted dungeons that much because it's not going to swap until the next week. Then hopping back into game here, as I mentioned, we have the boosted dungeons, which you're going to want to prioritize right now for me. Um, it's Sunday, so it's going to swap in just a day. I've been waiting and waiting. I waited till last week, but it didn't swap over and I haven't had time. I'm hoping it swaps over um, to, I completely forgot what I need again. Um, uh, Destruction Zen, so I'm going to be looking for Destruction Zen to be boosted. It hasn't been boosted for a while, so I hope it is. But uh, that'll tick over and we'll be all set. But... Then we have the actual speed of the dungeon. Now this matters a ton because some dungeons are way faster than others. Now I'm gonna assume you're running with a group, okay? I don't run dungeons solo. I think it's super irritating. The drop rate's lower, it's so slow, all that stuff. There's two dungeons in here that are AFKable. What I mean by that is you don't have to pay as much attention. There are pockets of like 20 seconds, 30 seconds you can AFK, or in one case you can AFK for little minutes and then come back and it pro progresses the dungeon for you. First one um, is going to be Temple of Namari. This dungeon has a lot of cutscenes and a lot of waiting. So if you um, are like me and you like to multitask, and I don't know, you know, edit videos or something on the side, or it's great to be able to run Temple of Namari as kind of like this passive dungeon. And then also uh, we have the, where is it? Where is, where's Kakura's Rapids? Did I pass it? Uh, come on, Kakuras. Hello, Kakuras Rapids. Uh, Kakuras Rapids is another one that's absolutely amazing. If you guys have not seen my meme, meme video about this dungeon, you can literally die and then sit on the raft the whole time and you can just revive at checkpoint. You'll revive back on the raft. Um, and you don't even have to kill the monsters. You only have to kill up to the fiery portion and then you have to kill the monsters there. And then for the rest of the time, you can just sit on the raft, which makes this my favorite dungeon to run because I can just sit there. So if you are someone like me and you have other things to do, then Kakura's Rapids or Temple of Mari are your top of the list. But as for all the other dungeons, if you're looking for specific set items, there are a few that are faster than others. Now. There are some strategies that potentially you could run differently that might speed things up. But as far as I've seen, first off, the fastest dungeon that I've found to be is going to be Mad King's Breach. This is something that we've optimized down to about a, two minutes. If you're running with a good group, you could get this down to about two minutes. This is very, very quick and it, potentially even faster. We're talking about when we were about 1500 resonance is when we were timing these and speed running these things. Um, Mad Kings, if you really know how to run it, this is going to be your fastest option to get set items. After that, um, I found that there's kind of a mix of certain dungeons uh, because some of them can be faster and some of them can be slower depending on uh, what kind of RNG you get in the dungeon. But if you're really good at Tomb of Fahir and you split the, the party and then you go back into the middle, you can actually run this very, very quickly along with Cavern of Echoes um, and uh, where is it? Forgotten Tower. Forgotten Tower is actually really, really quick, especially if you're able to kill the monsters very quickly. 
Temple of Namari and Kirkuros Rapids have a set time. You can't really speed those up no matter how much you try. Um, you can kind of just one-shot the boss, and then by the time the next boss pops up, you one-shot it still. So cooldowns and residence doesn't really have a huge impact because you're already having all your cooldowns up, so you can just one-shot it, and you're stuck by cutscenes. Same with Kirkuros Rapids. And then Pit of Anguish, um, Destruction's End, and silent monastery um, are going to be your slowest ones silent monastery is one of the slowest dungeons in the game there's a reason why it gives you 25 battle points when you are completing it it is because it is very very long now there are some things that you can do to optimize it for example do not kill every monster you see make sure you follow the map and there's certain like glowy icons on the map you're going to want to follow to each of those points and then kill the monsters there you're going to get a little bit more xp and a little bit more battle pass uh, points from it but uh you know it won't average out because you know mad kings is just that fast so if you're looking for just pure set items running the fast dungeon which is mad kings is going to be your best option in my opinion or if you're a little bit more of an aka player um i pretty much always find people for Kur Kur Kuros rapids because no one wants to run dungeons over and over and over again and over and over again so just like sitting on the raft is like one of the most enjoyable experiences in this game and uh you'll get a lot of set items from it just by passively running through and uh and you know killing the boss every four or five minutes but there you go guys that's going to be the fastest and the best way to farm some set items hopefully this helps again it's really important if any of you are looking to plan for the future there's not a whole lot you can do to prep for updates but if you want to get a head start this is a minor way you can do it because granted again it takes five set items that you're going to have to farm to craft up into one piece which may not or may be good so it's a lot of work but for those of you that are still ultimate grinders out there, I respect the hustle. And, uh, you know, this is going to be some methods on how you can basically help your strategy with that. Thanks for watching. Again, link in the description down below if you guys want to check out my spreadsheet and use it for yourself. Um, just make a copy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.